Hi, um, this is Kalo uh, once again. Kalo Kabo. Um, well, I wanted to upload another one and talk about some of the dream that I had. Uh, this was last year. Um, even the former one I had that uh, last year as well. But uh, it's only now that I got the chance to um, upload it. In this dream, I had taken my family to um, Florida, in a suburb, suburb in Florida, and well, it, it just opened up in this uh, suburban area in, in a town somewhere in Florida, but it was in the suburbs, and um, there's this sort of communal picnic party that was going on there it was quite large uh, about um it's like a whole community like almost uh um i don't know it was about three blocks wide uh, quite a number of people were there and uh i think about about um, at least a hundred families were there and everyone was having a good time like this sort of bungalows some houses were bungalows some were duplexes um, as in two-story buildings and stuff um, middle class nice neighborhood trees um, children are playing in like together everyone was having a nice time it was nice and sunny uh, great weather um, parents were just bonding mingling uh, it was really nice it was, it was a really nice uh, atmosphere uh, lots of barbecues going on and people helping out the women doing this the men you know helping out like stuff like that and while this was going on suddenly we saw almost at the same time we saw sort of fearful sights in the distance, uh, kind of disturbing. Uh, the sight was there were three tornadoes coming towards us, but they're still very far off. But the scary thing about them was they were not like the conventional tornadoes that are usually funnel shaped, like very big on top and then you know the smallest parts on earth. These were like straight pillars, like um, like the Pantheon, like huge pillars. That they, 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 they weren't funnel like they were just straight down. And each one was, in my estimation, about a mile wide. But there were three of them, and they were quite far off. But we could see them. They were so distinct that we could see them, and we knew. They were headed towards us. Uh, I think they were about um, uh, about ten miles away, between five and ten miles away. I can't remember what, but they were barreling towards us. And like I said, each one was almost a mile wide. I mean, that that was my estimation. And when everyone saw it, everyone took off. I mean, we just ran because we knew it was it was trouble. So I grabbed my wife and my daughter, and I just grabbed them. And as soon as I turned to flee, this huge, huge, huge building just I don't know. I just turned and saw this huge building. It was solid. It was it, it, it was like a fortress. I, I don't know how to explain it. It was a solid block of concrete. It was almost as if it was hewn out of a mountain. It was solid. I think it was probably about 10 stories high, which is quite unusual because I just explained to you the kind of buildings that were around there. That was a suburb. That building had no business being in that area. So I don't know where it came from. Uh, the, the walls must have been at least two feet thick 
that's how massive this building was and how strong it was so without hesitation i just ran into the building and other people went into other places some you know joined me uh, my family inside inside this huge um, edifice and uh, so i took my family straight down to the to the basement where i felt they'll be safe and well they should have been very safe there so i i put them in there and locked them up made sure they were safe but um i was curious i wanted to see what was going on so um i left them there and ran up to uh not the ground floor the first floor well in america that's second floor here in nigeria is the first floor so i ran up the from the basement to the past the ground floor up to the first floor second floor and um and then just hit not just hit by a window so i could see because i wanted to see what was going to happen yeah I'm like god i know i mean I, I know i should be in the basement but i want to see <laughs> let me see and um so i waited uh, by the window just hiding them looking <sighs> when that wind hit everything everything was obliterated everything you know how when you winnow or when you winnow um, rice or wheat, I don't know, the, the chaff that comes out, that's how everything was blown away. Every structure, tree, lamppost, um, whatever it was that was above the ground was up in the air, was blown away. Everything that was above the earth, above the soil, was blown away completely. It was so heavy that even the the building I was shifted for about half a foot between half a foot and a foot it just it just shifted about a foot and then came back onto its own axis like it just moved forward slowly and then came back same way like if if you put a car in park not the handbrake if you put it in park and you try to try to push it it goes forward a bit and then comes back that's how the building just moved forward a bit and then came back and rested and so when we're quite sure that the the storm was over um, the ones who were inside the building with me we all came out everything was stripped bare all the trees all the houses everything that was was stripped up and then we looked up and we noticed that there were huge planes in the air aircraft like Boeing 747s, um, 737s, um, airbuses, the big ones um, they were just hovering, not really hovering around they were, they were, they were I said they were drunken, I said they were drunk like they, they couldn't get their bearings, they just I think it was just the, the, the currents above that was just holding them up. And all of a sudden we knew that all those planes were going to crash. We just knew it. And so we began to pray. Everyone began to pray and pray for the souls inside those planes. We're praying and praying so fervently. And so the planes, all of them said, you know, um, falling down but it wasn't heavy like a stone it was like a feather um coming down and it just came came down slowly and fell to the ground and broke up like they crashed but they crashed gently so the planes were ruined but everyone in the in the in the in the planes uh everyone in them was saved and then I woke up. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are saved. That dream is encapsulated 
in this verse. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. If you believe that Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead, that God raised him, then you will run into that strong tower and be saved. You have to. If you don't believe it, you will not be caught up by God and be protected by him in this catastrophe that's coming. Just remember that. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Bless you.